Hey, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Paul Raymer. Thanks, Paul, for sending me up. Full disclosure, this is a paid advertisement, so don't turn your channel too quick. So, uh, and I'll try to make this as a brief five minutes for you. So I'm going to take ourselves out of the cloud and gain some great products here that uh, we're just, um, we're just uh, shared. But uh, I'm going to ask us to put our boots on. We're going to go to the field. And I'm going to show you our approach of uh, a, a technology that we've been working on for the past, uh, commercially offering it for the past five years, and uh, taking, taking a different approach or, um, as opposed to some of the traditional methods that have been uh, used in uh, uh, soil sampling. So we take a step back. We look at soil today as a, a precious resource that all living uh, matter uh, depend on. and. We look at our traditional approaches of, of measuring soil. Again, all of you would know management zones and the different aspects to be able to create those zones. Then we look at uh, traditional grid sampling and we break it down and we look at, let's say, the distance between, let's say, a two and a half acre grid is really um, like uh, a length of a football field. So we, we uh, break that down and we look at the, uh, the distance between those points to uh, realize the, the variation that can happen within, let's say, 330 feet. For, we take those, um, this is kind of jumping ahead on me here, Paul, but the, um, we take the numbers, let's say, that come back from the lab after those sales, sales samples are collected, and then we run, run it into software, and in full fairness to the software, um, we're giving it the aspect of interpolation of being able to create those zones from the very limited numbers that it's, it's collecting. So if we want to be able to chase more, um, what's it going to cost? Well, it's going to be very expensive. One of the um, soil scientists that I know uh, suggests to really get really key nutrient variability should be a half acre grid. But that can escalate into costs of $75, $80 an acre. But, and then also from the other aspect is that there's a level of human error between from the point of collection right to the, the lab. And I'm not trying to run any of the labs under the bus, but as I say, there is some errors that we probably all know that contribute in the whole system. And when there's decisions, especially fertility, economic, environmental decisions being made, um, we want to try to have as high accuracy of information as possible. So here's our approach. We've got this fancy tube that we can mount onto really any type of vehicle. And it's non-contact. And I know there's probably a lot of skepticism. Well, how can we measure anything that's not contacting the soil? We'll touch on that in a second. So it's a geological-based sensor. And it's pre-calibrated. So it's a tool that comes uh, out of the factory that's pre-calibrated. You go mount it on whatever vehicle turn it on and away you go. And we can travel up to speeds up to 12 mile an hour. Okay, so how does it work? So believe it or not, soil is giving off a natural radiation. It's always in a form of decay. And the, the radiation is called gamma radiation. And it's coming off just like popcorn off of the soil. We can't taste smell in our field, obviously, being human beings. But this sensor is designed to being able to uh, respond to those radiation. Um, that radiant activity. So we survey the field, and then following the, the survey of the field, we still take traditional samples, and then we run the data through um, our data processing center, and then we can export out the various different uh, properties, okay, high resolution properties. So this picture wasn't taken yesterday, but we have capability to be able to run through the field uh, with us uh, up to six inches of snow. Okay, here's just a quick example of our survey um, of the raw radiation. In the red would typically mean more clay soil, green would be more um, sandier type soil. And then all the individual points are where we would go and strategically still collect traditional samples. Okay, there's an example of our uh, high resolution output. Let's say that's of organic matter. Okay, and here's our outputs, just a quick snapshot of all the various properties, everything that a grower would want to know, we can, we can map or model. The strength of the tool is identifying texture, so we can do clay sand and silt and do loam, 
then we can also do complex models, plant available water, bulk density, et cetera. And then utilization, obviously variable rate fertilizer, but then also we could do, let's say, spot-specific litter basing on organic matters of the field, and then obviously soil, uh, uh, sorry, variable rate seeding basing on uh, plant available water. Okay, so here's a phosphorus map. Um, and again, I won't touch on it real deep, but uh, the, obviously the green areas are the higher levels of the phosphorus. But the old barnyard was right here, and we can see where the manure was spread uh, radiating from the field. And these were the samples that were collected to be able to help generate that model. So we're taking the sample data, or the sensor data, and the um, soil data, lab data, and we blend it together to be able to generate a high resolution model like that. So customer feedback. So Chuck is not an actor. He's a one of our customers, he also has a small retail, but uh, he's a third generation grower um, on, a, on a family farm. And uh, he, he had his, uh, he, he very analytical uh, micromanager type. And uh, so he wanted our sensor to run over his home field. He saw that um, the, uh, there was an aspect of, uh, he was curious on his pH levels. So we were, out of all of his traditional sampling methods, he was not able to be able to find with what we found uh, with, let's say, this five acre plot of uh, pH. So he went out and ground truced it, the map matched up, and he was, went out and amended with the right amount of lime, and he was able to produce from a mediocre part of the field into a higher producing part of the field. So anyways, that's uh, just a quick example, but this is um, uh, what I've got share today. So I appreciate your attention. I'll be around for the rest of the day.